How's it going everyone? And welcome back to another exciting video. Today I will talk about six mistakes every beginner smartphone filmmaker makes so that you can avoid them in the first place. Number one, wrong frame rate. The first thing you wanna look at when opening up your camera app is the frame rate. By default, the iPhone captures video at a standard of 30 frames per second. I mean, using 30 frames per second makes the image look smoother and sharper. That is why it might look better when doing vlogs. But if you're going for a more cinematic film style look, choosing 24 or 25 frames per second, depending on where you live, will give you much better results. So to change your frame rate on the iPhone, just head over to settings go to your camera and then record video and make sure to show PAL formats if you live in Europe or Africa Asia and South America uh, this way you will get uh, more frame rate options so for me because I live in Switzerland I choose 4k 25 frames per second high efficiency which allows me to record in HDR and if you're uh, someone who lives in the States, just select 4K 24 frames per second and you will get cinematic video results. Number two is low resolution. On the iPhone, the standard resolution is set to 1080p, which is high definition. But most iPhones are capable of recording at a higher resolution, which is 4K. 4K has more detail and makes the video look sharper. Depending on your device capability, I recommend recording at the highest resolution possible unless you're worried about storage space. So to change the resolution on your iPhone, you can go either the path I showed you before or you can select camera. And on the top corner, you have your resolution where you can select between HD and 4K. So always check that before you start recording. And to the right, you also have frame rates that you can select. Make sure that is set to 24 or 25 frames per second. Number three is auto settings. Like on most smartphones, the iPhone camera has a controlled focus and exposure control. If you didn't know, your iPhone camera automatically sets focus and exposure before hitting the record button. It's important to lock your focus and exposure to avoid changes while recording your video. So let me show you how to lock a focus and exposure on the iPhone. I'm gonna bring out my model Samus ever played uh, Super Smash Brothers and I'm gonna open up camera and as you can see as I pan right and pan left the focus and exposure changes so to avoid that just tap hold on the screen until AEAF lock appears and when I pan to the right now and pan to the left the focus and exposure stays so it's that easy by doing this simple step your video will already look much better if you want to take it a step further you can download filmic pro for $14.99 which is a professional video app that allows you to have more control over your camera if you want to know the difference between using the standard app and the filmic pro app i have a video ready for you right up here Number four is noisy image. Also when filming in low light conditions, the iPhone camera will automatically brighten up the image, which will introduce a lot of noise. In that case, you will have to manually lower the exposure. When using the standard camera app on the iPhone, I like to reduce the exposure slightly just because the camera app tends to brighten up the image a bit. So to adjust the exposure, just tap hold on the screen until AEAF lock appears and just uh, drag down with your finger to lower the exposure. As you can see, the exposure changes. As a rule of thumb, bringing your image back up from under exposure is a lot easier than bringing it back down from over exposure. For those that have the newer iPhone model, there is a setting called Auto FPS, which will automatically switch when shooting in 60 or 30 frames per second to 24 frames per second when shooting in low light conditions. Because what happens is that the shutter will open longer to let in more light, giving you better results. I don't use it as I want to switch frame rates manually, but for those who are starting out, this might be useful. 
Number five is using the internal audio. On most smartphones, the built-in microphone produces decent audio quality, but many make this mistake of being too far away from the mic, which will then capture more of the ambient noise. Being close to the mic will make your voice sound much clearer and richer. I prefer using an external shotgun mic such as the Rode VideoMic Mi L for better sound quality. Especially when filming in windy conditions, unlike using the internal mic, you can put on a windshield to block wind noise. Now people are more likely to watch a video with good audio quality but has a bad image quality than the other way around. That is not to say that you should neglect your image quality. I'm just saying that having good audio can keep your viewers interest, even if the image quality isn't that good. That's why the first thing I would invest in is in a good microphone. Last but not least is number six, is having shaky footage. Newer smartphones have good image stabilization, but for more complex movements, it's best to use a three axis gimbal. It's also easier to create smooth looking shots using a gimbal than going handheld. I use a smartphone gimbal by DJI called the OM4. It has a magnetic clamp that allows me to detach my iPhone to also create handheld movement because sometimes going handheld would be a better choice to support the story. For example, when shooting an action scene, but in most cases you want steadier footage. So having a gimbal is a must. So avoiding these six mistakes will improve the image quality of your video and will get you closer to becoming a pro smartphone filmmaker. Now I just scratched the surface of how to get the most out of your smartphone when it comes to making high quality videos. If you want to learn more, make sure to not miss out on my free smartphone filmmaking guide where I will help you find the right tools to get started. I also recently created a private smartphone filmmaking group where you can share your work, ask questions and get feedback, not only from me, but also from others. If you like this video, make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. This way you will help me create more awesome tutorials for you guys. If you're looking for an in-depth tutorial on iPhone filmmaking, this is surely what you're looking for. If not, then check out the video below. That is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of your support. Take care and I will see you in the next video.